So the hot topic of the day is the TikTok ban. Now, some people have been getting notices from TikTok saying to call our Congress people or whatever. Interestingly, I have not gotten those notices myself, but I have seen other people share them. Now, I'm going to give my take on it. Now, bear with me on this. I have two main thoughts in this video. Two totally different facets on this whole thing with TikTok. First, I'll talk about the co-opting of the app and what I think the, the government is trying to accomplish with the so-called band. That part may bum you out, but the second part, I hope you find inspirational because I'm going to talk about the value that TikTok continues to have for me personally. I encourage you to watch the whole thing because I think it'll definitely be worth it to you. First is my take on why the government is doing this. The government essentially got a lot of what they wanted during the first ban effort. They want the TikTok data, basically the content we create, housed in a place where they have control over it, whether it be for moderation purposes or general surveillance purposes. They got a partial win by getting the USA Creator data stored in an Oracle database. But before this happened, Microsoft also had their hat in the ring as far as gaining custodianship of this data. There were some of us at Microsoft that were actually kind of excited about the prospect of getting in on the TikTok game because at the time we were thinking it was going to be some kind of partnership. In our engineering minds, began dreaming of how we could incorporate TikTok into, say, our internal communications. And arguably, I think Microsoft would have been a bit more trustworthy solution. Yet somehow, Oracle ended up with it. Now, many of you may not be aware that Oracle started out as a project at the CIA, a project that was codenamed Oracle. The CIA had this wet dream of a central database where all the national law enforcement and surveillance data could be stored in one place for easy access by law enforcement agencies and intelligence agencies. If you want to learn more, take a look at the article published by Gizmodo on September 19, 2014, titled Larry Ellison's Oracle Started as a CIA Project. So, in my opinion, Oracle getting this data was no accident. What I think is happening now is that the United States is not satisfied with only the TikTok data that originates in the United States. They want all of it. So what do they do? The United States accuses the company ByteDance and China of the very thing that the United States wants to do, and that's have users' data shared with the government. I believe this is an attempt by the United States to get control over the rest of TikTok's data. What they are asking for is ByteDance to divest from TikTok, likely to be sold to an American company, so that all of the data can be used to expand the surveillance reach of the United States. After saying all that, you might be feeling kind of bummed out and maybe even a bit angry over this. Understandable. However, for the second part of this video, I'm going to talk about TikTok's continued value to me. I know the app isn't what it once was, but it still has a lot more value to me than something like Facebook. TikTok has much greater discoverability than other platforms. And yeah, the TikTok shop seemed a bit weird and annoying at first, but I do have to say, I do like that I can showcase some Dungeons and Dragons stuff and some virtual reality equipment on my profile page. Stuff that I and many of my followers may be interested in. But even beyond that, I've been able to build a community here. My live streams are a bit different than your average game streamer. I don't just play games and have people watch. My viewers can join me in VR chat, and we can meet as avatars in virtual worlds that stretch the imagination. We can play together there and just hang out and chill there. I have created some real connections with people all over the physical world by standing and talking right next to them in a virtual world. Some have told me that I am like a brother to them. Some call me dad, and even others have called me granddad. These friendships mean the world to me, and I'm glad that I can make a positive impact on so many lives. 
this was all made possible because of TikTok. So there you have it. That's kind of my perspective on it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not going to quit TikTok, at least right now. I'm not going to panic and say, oh, everybody go follow me on Twitch, like, like some of the creators are doing. Though, you can go and follow me on Twitch and YouTube. <laughs> I wouldn't mind you doing that. But yeah, that's that's kind of my overall take on on this whole thing. And personally, I don't think the band is going to be successful. But that's just kind of my feelings on it. So uh, you know, I don't think we should be panicking over it.